Hey everybody and welcome to the Bandite procedural texturing and shading course to the first exciting episode. In this episode we'll be going over the notes. Of course, uh, Eevee and Cycles use the same note setup and note... Uh, well, notes basically to uh, determine how the shader looks. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna briefly explain what everything means. So, uh, if you've seen the previous tutorials, uh, we ended up with this uh, nice base here. Or if you have your own shader setup, or if you just want to try this on Suzanne or anything, it doesn't really matter. Um, but okay, let's go look down here. We'll push this a little bit up. Uh, so, this is our note layout. Um, here we can put in different notes and connect them to each other with wires. And this will transfer data from one uh, node to the other. And we can make these trees as complicated as they can be, um, but we wanna keep them simple for most, uh, for most users. So, let's go over the, the wires first. So you see, already see here, you have these nodes of different colors. In most cases, you want to connect the same color to the same color. I'm just going to briefly explain what these colors are. If you go to Shift A, you already see here you have selections for um, different kind of notes. There's a lot of notes, but it's pretty straightforward what they do. And we'll go over them. So, the first color is gray. Gray, as this uh, as this note shows you, is just a value. It can be any value from, well, as long as your computer can calculate it. It can be minus 500, it can be 50, it can be 42. Anything you, uh, you wish. And you can add this value, connect it, to for instance the roughness value. Of course the roughness value has to be between 1 and 0 in most cases. And now we can control um, this with the uh, with this value so you can see we're changing the roughness here uh, things we can do with value notes for instance is putting in a math note so we can for instance divide the put in value by another value let's say two and then whatever value is in here will be divided to two and then put in the roughness Nice. The next one are yellow ones. Yellow ones are color values. So if you go to input, and you pick RGB, we see that the output is a yellow note. We can connect this to another yellow note. And this will display a color for us. So if we change this color to blue, it's nice. We can separate uh, the color value by going to converter. I'm going to separate RGB. And now you see that the color value is translated into three gray single value items. So R, G, and B. So by pressing control click, we can see the R value, the green value, and the blue value. And let's connect the color again to... If a color, uh, if a color socket is connected to a value, it will just take the value of that color. So that is possible. If you put a single value into a color uh, node, it will just take the grayscale value of that. So one becomes white, zero becomes black, and everything in between gray. Our third color is this purpley bluey. That is a vector. So if you input, uh, maybe I can explain this best with the combine X, Y, Z. So a vector has three um, values, X, Y, and Z. So, you might already notice that this is actually the same as RGB. So, if we combine a vector with a yellow, it just is translated from X, Y, Z to RGB. So, if you pump up the X value, it turns red, because it reads it as a red value. Vector information, though, is mostly used for uh, normal bump maps, uh, any kind of information that needs a direction, basically. So it is used for instructions 
to tell a mesh uh, or light which way to go. For instance, if you just pump up a simple texture in here, this is a color value. But now we can create a bump map, which will use the values in its singular value height and create a vector normal map. These look like very funky colors, but these colors are just how the program shows the X, Y, Z coordinates. And that information can put, be put in a normal for information how the height looks on this shader. So now we can lower the strength. So the only thing you have to keep from this is that blue are vectors. The last one is green. These are shaders. Shaders, there's a lot of them. <laughs> we have the few shaders. Uh, we have glass shaders. We have different shaders to do different things. Um, these basically just give instructions to the renderer how to display uh, our material. These cannot be uh, easily put into um, the RGB slots and stuff. Thankfully we have a new one that is shader to RGB, which does do that. Now we can create some real funky stuff. If we connect the glass shader color to the base color, and we get very funky stuff. But more about that later. So, just to summarize, gray are single values, yellow are RGB values, blue are vector values, and green are shader values. We want to pop uh, at the end. You want to pop these in in the surface, volume, and or displacement node. The volume and displacement are used for um, cycles mostly, and we'll be mostly using the surface for uh, checking shaders in Eevee. You can do a, a separate material output for Eevee or cycles, but we'll do that when we get there. So a couple more things you can do with nodes is you can select multiple, multiple of them by pressing B. You can move them by G. These are basically all the same shortcuts you have in your 3D view. So once you select one, you can press G. Um, if you select multiple ones and you press S for scaling, you can scale them up or down. If you want to compact some of them, move them over here and expand them, that's all possible. And you can press H to collapse them. This might be handy if you're like, want to keep things a little bit compact. Another thing to help you out is the layout. You can create a frame. Once this frame is created, we can select our nodes, select a frame, press Ctrl P for parent, and it will automatically resize to those nodes. And once I move that frame, everything moves with it. Another thing we can do is select multiple nodes and press Ctrl G. This will group nodes. So now we just have these two nodes and we can have inputs and outputs. And what does this mean? If we press tab to go out of that group, it created the node group with the input and output we selected. This will get more clear as we use it um, more often. We can, for instance, put the color in here and in the node group gets put through a glass shader. Not sure what you would use this for, but hey, it's doing stuff. Let's delete this one. One last thing is you can add a reroute node, which means that we can add multiple values to it. One last thing you can add is a reroute, where we can put in a value if we need it for multiple purposes, or we just want to make it look pretty. And for instance, you can use it for the metallic and sheen, if you want to have that controlled by one single value. And we can move this over here. That makes things look a little bit nicer as well. So now that we created these nodes here, we have a funky little shader here. I actually kind of like the look of this. But uh, yeah, and now we can preview it over here. 
looks very nice. Put the gizmos off, and we just see the shader. All right. Uh, hope you enjoyed this short overview of what nodes are and how to use them. In the next one, we'll be going over the principal shader. The shader node we're going to use in 99% of the cases. Well, see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.